<laughs> I'd rather focus on the second part of this verse, which says, when one stronger than he comes to attack and overpower him, the stronger one, Jesus, empties the arsenal in which he trusted, <laughs> okay? So he loses his power over you. When Jesus comes in and becomes your victor, the enemy loses his power over you. And ideally, you never want to do that thing again. Like you get delivered from wanting to do it anymore. It doesn't happen for everybody that way. So you don't have to feel less than if it didn't, wasn't immediately taken from you. But you know that the tools are available. The Lord will give you the tools to give you victory over that situation. All right? That's, it could be different for people. But the ultimate goal is Jesus is stronger than the strong man. So no matter what I'm going through, any problem I face, he made a way out for me. If I'll dig in and, and soak myself in the word and spend time with the Holy Spirit and stop being so distracted, because that's just another tool of the enemy today, is to feed you a heavy diet of distraction and stop you from having any kind of long-form learning and spending an hour reading something complex. The Bible's complex. The book of Romans, the book of Hebrews, they're not an easy read. It's not a bumper sticker. So if he can keep you distracted, you're just going to, oh, I'll, I'll read a psalm. I'll read a verse. Jesus wept. I read my Bible. <laughs> See what happens? Because they spend a lot of money trying to addict you to video games and even YouTube and, and Facebook, too. I'm, you know, I, I put that qualifier out there. You have to control your spirit, man. But it could still be used for good. It's really hard to get a victory if you can't even pay attention for more than 10 seconds, right? We got to be able to focus in on the Lord. So what are some of the things? I love 22. The conqueror, Jesus, will ransack the devil's kingdom and distribute all the spoils of victory. That's to you. The person that gets free not only gets free, but then gets what the devil was using as a spoil of the victory. Just like David's men, right? When they got ransacked. Their city got ransacked, and the men wanted to kill him, but they went back and, and found their stuff, and they found their wives, and they took back all the spoils of war. Not just their stuff. They got stuff that these, the enemy had taken from other people. So you are the victor, and it's not just that you stop doing a certain behavior. You now have authority to help other people with the thing that was bothering you. Joyce Meyer can talk to people who've had sexual abuse in their lives because she lived through it. And got victory over it. That gives you so much authority. It's awesome, isn't it? All right, so what are some of the things that the Lord gives us on this side of the victory? What are some of the spoils that we should just meditate on and remember? And I was just really coming to tears as I was thinking about it. The first thing I'm going to say is Holy Spirit. Okay, because it's the main difference in your life, saved versus not saved. Now, how much room you give him is up to you. But you really do need to be intentional about giving him room. A lot of men especially, we just think asking for help is a sign of weakness. And the lady said, yeah, and the men don't say amen because it's like, it is a sign of weakness. I shouldn't have to ask for help. But prayer is asking for help sometimes. And prayer is not a sign of weakness, is it? Right. So Holy Spirit is the power of God inside of you to help you keep reminding you that you shouldn't do this alone. Ask for guidance. Seek the Lord's help. If I have an idea, the first thing Trisha asked me is, did you pray about it? And what did the Lord say? That's a pretty good answer, isn't it? We should all be saying that to each other. I'm not saying it's a bad idea, but did you pray? And what did the Lord say? Oh, well, it's kind of obvious. I didn't have to bother him with this one. Don't say that. It's a problem. He's not bothered, first of all, by it. And if you're not praying, you're going to jump into some conclusions and assumptions that could be wrong. Something could look good but not be God. So be careful. So Holy Spirit's on the top of my list. How about being forgiven? That was the spoil of war because, you know, the enemy is an accuser of the brethren. So he tries to put you on trial. And the odd thing is, when he accuses you of, you did it. <laughs> I did. If he put me on trial... And the judge said, stand, and how do you plead, Mr. Roselli, to the charge of adultery? Back then, not today. Guilty. To the charge of possession of dangerous controlled substances. Guilty. 
to the charge of selling dangerous controlled substances called drug dealing. Guilty. I, I would have had to say that. It was true. But my attorney said I paid a price for him. Whew. We get the spoils of victory, see? We get forgiveness, and we get well, what I saw this morning was that picture when the adoption papers came out. It's God's DNA that you got adopted into, and you're now a child of God. And because of that, you get a seat at his table regardless of your background. Whew. And look, it doesn't mean what you did wasn't bad. It just means he's better. <laughs> and he's willing to forgive you. You could say, why? I didn't deserve it because he loves you. Amen. You're right. We didn't deserve it. That's why it's called grace. But now that we're in grace, let's not be sloppy about it and just say, well, he has to forgive me so I could just live any way I want. Right? That's Paul warned us against that. So don't forget about forgiveness. Top of the list too. Right up there with Holy Spirit. I, I got a bunch of them here. Just getting set free. I mean, one of the reasons we spend time in worship is you just have to celebrate. You have to remember that you're free. And, you know, the, ca the cares of this life could start to wear you down, but it's just so good to step into an atmosphere where people are celebrating. So, look, if you want to stay sad, come at 1115 or something. I don't know. Because we plan on celebrating when we get together because we got a lot to be thankful for. I'm alive right there. That's enough. I told you, my cousin Vinny, when he was training me in the garbage business, he said, look, life's tough, and then you die. <laughs> That's like the family motto. That's a little depressing, man. Yeah, life's tough, but I have God. That's better than then you die, you know, because then I live. <laughs> I'm going to be resurrected. Um, I'm, I'm just going to think of Isaiah 61, too. There's so many of what he says here, distributes the spoils of victory, right? Just in that one couple of first verses of Isaiah 61, I came to heal the brokenhearted and to bind up their wounds. I came to give you beauty for ashes. Ho, oh, how many had ashes? And he handed you beauty for ashes. In the Message Bible, it says a bouquet of roses for your pile of ashes. He took your death and gave you life. Oh, man, you got to stay excited about that. He gave me joy for mourning. You know, this is true in our household that I didn't realize until I got, until it was unpacked a little bit for me. I knew Trisha's mom had a very rough life, but I didn't, you know, I didn't really get to know her as well until she was living with us. And she ended up living with us for 15 years. And, you know, she was shell-shocked in some ways because she lived in, in the war, uh, in Europe during the war. And her town was bombed by the, you know, the Allies. The war was going on right in her village. German soldiers were coming in, doing horrendous things to people. And not just the German soldiers, other soldiers, too, did terrible things. So Trisha's dad was uh, in, in the U.S. Army. He was there. They met and, you know, called for her and said, come back. I want you to marry me. And she comes to America, doesn't know English, and just has to figure it all out. There was some family here. So, you know, years go by and years go by, and, and she's still a little shell-shocked when she moves in with us. She had experienced a lot of, of uh, hard things in her life. But just through the love of God, just through living in our house um, and, you know, seeing a change in Trisha, <laughs> which happened before she moved in, you know, their relationship really changed. I remember um, Linda saying to me one time, whenever their mom was mad at Trisha, she'd go to Linda and say, tell her to read that book again. <laughs> so even though her mom wasn't a Christian, she knew it was having a good effect on her daughter. <laughs> but look, man, she was a survivor to the max. This lady was one of the toughest people you'd ever want to meet. Um, so the thing is, once she came into the house, she was engulfed with love. And she was engulfed with God. And, you know, she came to us the first couple of weeks she was there, and she says, where's the bill for the phone, and how much do I have to pay on the electric bill? And we said, you don't have to pay anything. You live with us. And she was shocked. Like, even that, you know, if you're not used to it, you, you wouldn't have just expected it. And, you know, maybe you're uncomfortable to say it. And, like, she couldn't believe the, the grace of God would be that great, you know? And it wasn't us. Who, who's going to charge your mother-in-law rent? <laughs> You got to pay the phone bill? What, are you kidding me? No, there was no strings attached. We want you to live with us. 
what if I had to pay you to cook for us? I'd have to pay you $1,000. She's a great cook, right? But she didn't think she should be paid for that either, right? You see how it works? And this whole other side of her personality blossomed. That's part of the spoils. It's the spoils that, the de- the, that God takes back from the devil that tried to rob. He tried to rob her joy. And the three girls are going, man, I never knew mommy had such a great sense of humor. Because <laughs> mostly growing up, she wasn't very happy. She, and it, she had reason not to be. But it's never too late. It's so awesome, right? And even with a crusty old tough guy, gets filled with the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, you see tears start coming down because the Holy Ghost is working on that inside, right? I mean, you know, I could go all day on this. I just want to go to a couple more. Go to Ephesians 4. I really could go all day, and I'm not going to. I know what time it is.